Hey guys, Phil Baumhardt here. So for today's knife of the week, I got this uh, scalping knife that I wanted to show you. So basically any of my uh, knives that I do with an antler handle that are just uh, bigger than kind of a traditional hunting knife, I, I like to call them a scalping knife, uh, mainly just because it sounds cool. You know, it's a good kind of uh, marketing name. But uh, it does harken back to the, uh, you know, kind of historic roots that I like to draw these knives from. In the 17 and 1800s, the importers of uh, trade knives had what they dubbed scalping knives, which were basically just uh, uh, large, cheap butcher knives that they would use for trading with the Indians as well as uh, selling to the uh, uh, frontiersmen and settlers and uh, mountain men of the time. Uh, these kind of knives were favored by uh, by a lot of trappers and uh, backwoodsmen. And it's not a name that I intend to be uh, offensive or uh, politically incorrect. It's just sort of what they were called at the time, which, uh, you know, is not an excuse, of course. Uh, this kind of large knife would not be bad uh, uh, for using as a fighting tool, but you could also use it for uh, other kind of uh, camp chores and, and you know, cause it's just sort of a all-around uh, survival knife. So one of the reasons I wanted to make this video was just sort of to show you the uh, the size of it because uh, it was a difficult knife for me to uh, photograph uh, just to get the, the scale properly. It's got a 10-inch blade um, and a really long, uh, really big antler on here. I believe this is from a white-tailed deer. Uh, you can actually get two hands on it. And I wear a, a size large glove, so that's actually uh, pretty impressive. But uh, holding it right here at the at the top of the antler, it's got a really nice balance and feel. And so from doing the, the, the cutting test with it, 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 it cuts uh, phenomenally well. And then you can even uh, choke back here and get that extra leverage for uh, hacking. So like on the uh, the rope cut, it really just blew through that uh, that thick climbing rope quite easily, which I was I was pretty impressed with. So, And this is a knife that I'm really kind of proud of uh, because the uh, the blade was entirely forged to shape with minimal grinding. I think the only thing I ground on this was actually the uh, the final edge. That was the only bit of grinding I did on this. So everything else was, was forged in. So these uh, edge bevels you can kind of see faintly, that was all done with the hammer. So I'm uh, happy with the way that turned out. So this was forged from uh, some uh, leaf spring uh, scraps. I believe this is from the same leaf spring that I used to make that uh, long sword. I'm not 100% sure. I don't really remember at this point. But And what's neat about these knives is that uh, they're uh, really one of a kind with the, the, the antler handle on here because there'll never be another antler uh, just like this and I'll never be able to forge the blade exactly the same way again. So And so just for the uh, added aesthetics, I, uh, uh, I've got a little bit of a brass collar on here and a bit of file work here on the spine. And then for the sheath, I did kind of the, uh, the par fletch style sheath with the brass tacks on there. Now, full disclosure, these tacks don't go uh, all the way through. Uh, I bought them with the intention of doing that, but they're such a short, kind of useless tack. They're really for decoration only, so I, you know, decorated it and then uh, epoxied the sheath together and then added this uh, leather lace along the welt just to help hold it together. Got my homemade uh, birch oil stain on there and uh, did some wet molding to uh, to give it a good fit. So this is a, this is a secure sheath, and then I got the uh, slit style of. Uh, uh, carry method for running through your belt or a sash. Uh, so the, one of the advantages of that, you know, it's not really a style that we uh, carry style that we use nowadays. But one advantage to this style is that you could wear this uh, quite easily over a uh, coat. So if it's the, the winter time, if there's any sort of uh, weather that you're having to uh, deal with, you can wear your knife on the outside of all your garments so that it's easily accessible, either for fighting or utility use. And with this uh, extra long antler, you can grab the entire thing and, and draw it out but it's still you know half the handles in the sheath so it's a secure fit you don't have to worry about it falling out so this this type of sheath just for my own nomenclature i've kind of dubbed the uh, jeremiah johnson style of sheath because that was the first time i really saw it within the uh robert redford uh, jeremiah johnson movie so i don't have the actual name for what the for what this type of sheath was called so uh if you guys know throw it down in the comments just to uh let me know and if you're interested in owning this knife uh check out the etsy web store I'm going to have a link to it in the description box, as well as uh, links to my Facebook and Instagram page. If you want to follow me on there, you can keep up with my latest and greatest work. So, so that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, be more Viking.